Good morning, mathematicians. Welcome back today. Um, Ms. Obenchain here with you, and Ms. Karnas will be out in a minute. Um, we're going to start off reviewing some work with five frames that I think you did earlier this week um, with a different teacher. So this up here is a five frame, and there are five boxes on the frame. Every time you see something on that frame, it's going to have five boxes. And I think, like I said, you already worked with these. And so I'm going to show you a five frame really quickly. And what I want you to think about is how many dots are there and how many empty boxes do you see? So I'm going to take that one away. Whoops. Make sure we can see everything. All right, how many dots do you see? Five, that's right. All the boxes are full. So when all the boxes are full, you're going to know that it is five right off. And there are no empty boxes. How many dots do you see this time? Three. And how many boxes are empty? Two. So that means that we would need two more dots to make five. Three and two makes five. All right, how many dots do we see this time? There's two, and now there's three empty boxes. So it's kind of the opposite of the one we just looked at. How many dots now? Full frame again, five full dots. How many now? One dot, right? How many boxes are empty? One, two, three, four. We would need four more dots in order to make five. So one and four would make five. And let's see what our last one is here. We have the opposite. We have the four dots and we're missing one. That's right. So four and one still makes five. So on this next set of cards, I'm going to show them to you kind of quickly, and you will try to see. These cards have some dots red and some dots blue, showing us our parts to make five. What did you see? That's right, five full dots and no blue dots. What did you see this time? How many red dots did you see? Four, that's right. And how many blue dots did you see? One, because four and one makes five. How many blue dots and how many red dots this time? How many red did you see? Only one. So then how many blue dots were there? Four, because that's what goes with one to make five. What did you see there? Three red dots, and how many blue dots? Two, that's right. And here's our last one. How many red dots that time? Two, and how many blue dots? Three. So let's write down our combinations to make five. I'm going to use these bigger cards. If I have a frame all full of five dots, do I need any more dots to make five? I don't, do I? So if I have five dots, I don't need any more. So five plus zero is a way to make five. If I have a completely empty frame with no dots on it, how many would I need to make five? I would need all five of them, right? So we can do the opposites, right, to make five.
if I have four dots on my frame, there's one empty box. So what would the opposite of that be? If I had one dot, how many would I need? Four, that's right. If we have one dot, we need four. There's kind of a pattern here, isn't there? What if I had three dots? How many would I need to make five? Two, that's right. And then I can flip those around and get the other combination. If I have two, then I would need three. You're right again, catching on to this. So those are all of our ways to make five. We can make five with five and zero, or zero and five. We can make five with four and one, or one and four. And we can make five with three and two, or two and three. Those are good number combinations to know because they can help you when you're adding bigger numbers later. Okay, so that was a little review of the work you did on Monday with five frames. And now we're going to talk about a 10 frame. So that means, let's see if we can see it up here. How many squares do I have now? I have a row of five and another row of five. Five and five makes 10. So what we're gonna do is put these cards in order up here. So you can think about it. If I have zero dots, I would have a frame then that has one dot two dots, three dots, four, five, six. Oh, I might have to squeeze these a little closer together. See if I can get all the way up to 10 on this same row. This one with five and two more would be seven. Five and three more would be eight. Five and four more would be nine. And then I'd have a full 10 frame. Five and five would make 10. There's another way that you can put dots on a 10 frame. And we'll be coming back to this. This one looks just the same. Maybe that's what I'll do. We'll get rid of the zero, because that's a pretty easy one to see, and we can put the 10 up there that way. There we go. So we have one dot, two dots. Look at this one. It's very different in the way that it's arranged. The dots are that way, and then this one, they're next to each other. There's the three and the four and the five, six, seven, eight, nine, and a full frame looks the same. What do you notice about these? Oops, well, that didn't work, did it? came right off of here. <laughs> All right. What we're going to talk about is what happens with the frames, the first blue ones that we had on the top, which have fallen off. Those frames fill the five first. And so we have five, and we talked about five frames. When you see that row full, you know it's five. If I have five and one more, it makes six. If I have five and two more, it makes seven. Five and three more makes what? Eight, you're right. 
five and four more makes nine, and five and five makes 10. The other way that I showed you that these dots could go on the frame, and we're kind of just introducing these today so that we can work with them some more with some games. We would have one, it looks just the same, but two looks like this, three looks like that, and four looks like that. I'm building it like a double. These are called doubles frames. The other ones build the five first. So five on this one looks like that instead of having the full row. So there's five. What comes next? Six, seven, eight, nine, and then 10. All right, I think that we'll stop with those today. We'll go through those um, again next time and start doing some games and talking about the number combinations that you can find on a 10 frame now that you've seen those. We're gonna let Miss Karnas come out and do some problem solving with you. All right, good morning, math lovers. We're so glad you're here with us today again. We're gonna switch over some technology. Are you going to use this? Only for trios, to put the trios on. Okay. Um, okay. So. Let me just kind of steer clear of you. Hang on a second here. We went back. We're almost there. I wish you guys were here to help me. Hmm. Oh boy. All right. I think we'll be ready here in just a second. Aha. Here we go. Okay, boys and girls. So we have um, kind of an interesting investigation we're going to do today. We are going to try to travel some different routes on this road and visit three dots before we get to the finish. So we start at the green dot. We want to visit three dots as we go, finish up, and really what we're trying to do is see if we can get to the finish um, without going over 20. So we're gonna give this a try and see how many routes we can find that will give us 20 or even less, maybe. Okay, so let's see now. Here's our next technology piece. <laughs> Great. Okay, so we're going to use uh, a double 10 frame to help us keep track of how close we're getting to 20. And we're gonna do this really systematically so that we can sort of keep our ideas organized. So we're gonna start with the $1 dot and we're gonna work out all the ways we could start with $1. So we start with $1. So we'll put, oh, <laughs> we'll put one dot, nope. Let's see. Oh, guys. Hmm. Well. Nope. We may instead then have to use Mrs. Ovenshane's double 10 frame wand. We always have a backup plan and we can keep track this way. So we'll keep using our dot map and we'll use frames here. All right, so if we start with our $1, right? We can add one onto our double 10 frame. Still have plenty of plenty of room. The next place we could go is we could go to the $9 dot. So let's go ahead and add our nine, right? 
And what's gonna happen when I add my nine here, guys? Can you predict it? I knew you would know. It's gonna fill that whole top frame, right? There it is, so we've got one and nine is giving us 10, so we still have plenty more room. And if we follow the route, one, nine, nine, are we going to reach the finish without going over 20? Look at my frame to think about it. You betcha we are, right? Because this is a 10 frame, so if we put nine dots on it, we will still have one more space left. So how many is that, boys and girls? Are one, nine, and nine. It's 19. Isn't that a clever way to keep track? Let's go ahead and write down that route because we want to refer back to these later. And these are dollars, remember? We're trying to save our money on our route. Maybe we could buy something at the gas station if we don't use all our money. Ha ha. Oh, that was a nine. 19. I'll oh, miss Carnes better write a tiny bit smaller next time. Okay. Let's try another route, boys and girls. So we're still at nine. I'm still starting with one. Starting with one, okay? And the next place we could go is we could do one and nine and ten. Hmm. So kind of like before, we have our one, we have our nine, and I'm kind of wondering as I fill this in, do we even need our frames to know if we're going to make it under 20? Let's think about that. We're adding one, one dollar plus, $10 plus $9, what's gonna happen? We're gonna have one more than we did before, right? So what will our answer be for this one? If we add one and nine, and now I'm adding 10, can you predict it? exactly 20 on that route. All right, we're doing well so far. Okay, let's try one more with one. What's another way that we could go with one? We could go one, okay, and add 10, here's our 10, and three more. We're gonna be way under 20 on that one, aren't we? Let's see how many we end up with. Wow, how many is that? 10, and our three and one makes four. So we've gotten to 14, we're way under 10 on that one. Nice job. So that was $1 plus $1 plus, I mean, oh goodness, $1 plus $3 plus $10. And that got us to 14. So far we're doing well, boys and girls, on our routes. So now let's go on. We're gonna start with seven this time, okay? So let's build our seven. How can we build seven on our frame? We start with a five, and then we can add two more, can't we? Okay, so we can go seven plus 10. That's gonna fill our whole frame, right? And then we're going to add three more to get to our finish. Will we make it in 20 or under? We will. How many will we have when I fill the rest of this frame? Exactly 20, isn't it? That's great. 
Let's go ahead and add this one on. So here we had seven plus ten dollars plus three dollars and that got us to exactly 20. Very good guys, we haven't been short so far at all on our trip. Let's try another with seven. So we can do seven, let's do seven plus 10 plus nine. So here's our seven already, right? Five and two is our seven. And we have our 10. Will we be able to fit nine on these frames? We won't, will we? So we could fit three and we're gonna have six left over. So let's think about how that goes here. We'll have our seven plus our 10, right? That gets us to 17 already, really close to 20. And if we add nine more, that gets us to 26. Oh no, we don't have enough money to take that route. So let's try a different one. Let's start with eight this time. So we could start with eight and we have an easy way to make eight. Here's our seven, right? And we can add just one more. So we're going to go eight plus 10. So we're gonna fill that whole bottom frame again. And what's going to be our last add end or number? Hmm. Seven and 10, oh, uh, or eight and 10, we're at 18. Do we have room to add three more and not make it to 20? We don't, do we? We can add two more, but not three. So we're over by one. Let's go ahead and record this one. $8 plus our $10 plus our $3. Remember we said would get us to 20 plus one more. So that's 21. We didn't quite have enough to travel that route. Close, but not quite. All right, we have a few more that we can start with eight. So this time, let's try eight and six and three. Eight plus six plus three. So here's our eight, right? Okay. And if we wanna build our six below, we can do five and one more. Do we have room to add on three more? You betcha guys, we do. So here's, so we have eight and six. How many does that give us guys? Five and five is 10. Three and one more is four. So we have 14 so far. And then we're gonna add 15, 16, 17 with our other three. That is a good route. Let's add that. Eight dollars plus six dollars plus three dollars. All right, very good. So the, we said this got us to 14 and three more, 17. We are under $20. Are there any more routes we can find? Let's see. Hmm, I see one more and here it is. It would be eight plus 10 plus nine. What do you predict about that one? Eight plus 10 plus nine. Will that work for a route that's under $20, $20 or under? Here's our eight, right? So if we think about that without even filling the frame, right? We would fill our whole bottom frame to make 10. So we'd already have 18 and we need to add nine more. No way, that's not gonna work, is it? 
it won't, we'll be way over on that one. So I'm gonna fill up the frame because I don't have room to write that one. So we'll use the frame to help us figure it out. All right. So we have five and three, that's our eight on the top. And a full frame on the bottom gives us 10. So we have 18 and we have to add nine. We can add two more here. That's gonna get us to 20. And how many leftovers do we have? Seven, 27. That is way over. That's, um, I think, our most expensive route. So let's just look at some of the problems we did and we're gonna mark up the ones that saved us money so we didn't even have to use $20. And we're gonna check the ones that were exactly 20. So one plus nine plus nine gave us 19, right? One and nine is 10 and nine more 19. That one gets a star because we didn't even have to use our whole $20. How about this one? We had $1 plus $10 plus $9. So we know that one and nine gives us 10 and another 10 gave us 20 and that one gets a nice big check because it was exactly 20, and that's good news too. One and three and 10. So we have our one and three gives us four, and four plus 10 gives us 14. This is a good one because we saved some money. We did not have to use it all. All right, seven plus 10 plus three. We've made a seven and a three is our 10, and another 10 is 20. This one gets a check. We did a good job there. Next, we have our seven plus 10 plus nine. Whew. Well, right here, this is 19, almost 20, and seven more gives us that 26. So this one, uh, too expensive, that route. We can't take it. Eight plus 10 plus three. We ended up with eight and 10. Eight and three is almost 10. It's 11, right? And 11 plus 10 is 21. So, uh, that route didn't work either. And finally, we have eight plus six plus three. So if we put these together with six and three, we have eight and nine, which gives us 17. And that's a great one. We saved some money. Did you know, boys and girls, that if you travel in other places in this country, you might get on a road that has something called a toll and you have to pay to travel those roads. So some people really have to plan to make sure they have enough money to take the route they've planned. So we had a little fun pretending we were traveling today on our routes. Thank you, boys and girls. We're gonna take it back to Mrs. Obenshane, who's gonna read you a story. All right, we are going to read a story today called 100 Hungry Ants. Don't know if you've seen this book before. It was written by Eleanor J. Pinsett and illustrated by Bonnie Mac McCain and um, published by Houghton Mifflin Corporation. So 100 Hungry Ants, let's find out what's going on. A whole hill of hungry ants, their faces all aglow, came swarming from the forest to cross the field below. A soft breeze fanned the sunshine and whisked them on their way. It hinted of yummies for their empty tummies that meant a picnic, hooray. 100 hungry ants, we're singing and marching in a row. We're going to a picnic, a hey, a hidey ho. Picnics are really nice for summer, right? Maybe this weekend you'll get to go on a picnic. Stop, said the littlest ant. We're moving way too slow. Some food will be long gone unless we hurry up. So, with two lines of 50, we'd get there soon, I know. 
So first they were in one line of a long line of 100, and now he wants them to get into two lines of 50. All the ants raced here and there, up and down and to and fro. There'll be lots of yummies for our hungry tummies, a hey and a hidey ho. 100 ants were singing and marching in two rows. We're going to a picnic, a hey and a hidey ho. Stop, yelled the littlest ant. We're moving way too slow. More of the food will be gone unless we hurry up with four lines of 25. We'd get there fast, I know. Oh, he wants them to switch around again. All the ants raced here and there, up and down and to and fro. We hope there's yummies for our rumbling tummies, a hey and a hidey ho. 100 ants were singing and marching in four rows. You see there's their rows. We're going to a picnic, a hey and a hidey ho. Stop, screamed the littlest ant. We're moving way too slow. Lots of food will be long gone unless we hurry up. So with five lines of 20, we'll get there soon, I know. All the ants race here and there, up and to and fro. There might be a yummy for a gurgling tummy, a hey and a hidey ho. So they're changing again. There they are now in five rows. 100, hung, 100 ants were singing and marching in five rows. We're going to a picnic, a hey and a hidey ho. Stop, shrieked the littlest ant. We're moving way too slow. All the food will be long gone unless we hurry up. So, with 10 lines of 10, we'll get there soon, I know. All the ants raced here and there and up and to and fro. There better be yummies for our grumbling tummies, a hey and a hidey ho. I don't know, do you think there'll be any food left? 100 ants were singing and marching in 10 rows, there they are now. Have you been noticing all of this happening with the, in the pictures, the other animals taking away the food? At last, we're at the picnic, a hey and a hidey ho. What do you think will happen? Stop, yipped the littlest ant. We've traveled way too slow. There's no food for us to eat. You took so long with Rose. Uh-oh. All the ants raced here and there, up, down, and to and fro. There aren't any yummies for our growling tummies, a hey and a hidey ho. Oh, no. 99 ants were swarming from each and every row in hot pursuit of one little ant who quickly turned to go. It's not all my fault, you know. I don't know. I think he maybe slowed them down by changing all their, cha getting them to change their rows. All right, so let's talk about what rows he had them in. First, the ants started, do you remember? In one row of 100, right? One row of 100. So we could write a number sentence for that of 100, and it was just 100, right? Maybe zero, there were zero other rows. There were only 100 ants in one row. And then what did the little ant say? Do you remember what he wanted them to do? He wanted them to change from their one row to, how many rows? Two rows, right? There they were with two rows. So two rows of 50. Was that still 100 ants? Just arranged differently though, right? Because 50 
plus another row of 50 would still equal 100. It's just a different group. Then what did he want them to do? Do you remember? They went to one rows, then two rows, four rows of 25. Is that still 100? 25 plus 25 plus 25 plus 25. 25 and 25 makes a 50, and another 25 and 25 makes another 50, and we know that 50 and 50 equals 100 also. So it's still 100. What was next? Five rows of, do you remember how many? 20. Do you think that still makes 100? Let's see. 20 plus 20 plus 20 plus 20. One, two, three, four, plus 20. Five rows of it. So 20 and 20 is 40, 60, 80, 100. We could also, we could also count by twos and then put our zeros there, right? Two, four, six, eight, ten would be a way for us to check that that was 100 also. Or if we took these fives off of here, five and a five and a five and another five makes another 20, five, 10, 15, 20. So that would be how we'd change those around. What was the last way that the little ant wanted them to be arranged? 10 rows of 10. Is that still 100? 10 plus 10 plus 10 plus 10 plus another 10. Let's keep going here until we get 10 of them. 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70, 80, 90, 100. That equals 100 also. So there were lots of different ways for us to add these numbers together and the rows together to make 100. He, in the book, you will remember probably that they were kind of arranged in lines. There's another word that can refer to it. I'm gonna to go to the page with the 10 rows of 10 because that one you can really see all the lines next to each other. And they're arranged kind of in an array. And so we're gonna think about what if there were only 20 ants? What arrays could you make for 20 ants? We're gonna use a little smaller number because this paper won't, I don't think we could do an array for that many, the hundreds. We could have one row of 20, right? Just like in the book, they started out with one row of 20. How else could we arrange it? Could we get them into two rows and still make 20? What would be in our rows? 10 would be in our rows, right? 10 plus 10 equals 20. Two rows of 20. I mean, of 10, sorry. 10 plus 10 would equal 20. Right? What else could we do? Four rows and five rows? We could do rows of five Five, 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 and five. So four rows of five would also give us 20. Five, 10, 15, 20. Could we get, get five rows? I think it would work for 20 also. Four, eight, 12, 16, 20. Would you kind of notice that this array is the same as this array flipped? They're just diff a little bit different in the, this one. I'll put these other lines in so you can see them.
This one has four rows. One, two, three, four. Oops, I think I drew an extra row in there. Five rows, one, two, three, four, five, with four in each row. And this one has four rows with one, two, three, four, five. Got an extra row in that one too. Or it's a little too big. But if we flip this array this way, it would look the same as that. How about this one then? Can we flip that array? We could do it by the groups of two. Better make sure, two, four, six, eight, 10, 12, 14, 16, 18, 20. Yep, I've got enough. And that kind of ends up being this array flipped on its side. And I could also do the same thing here, and I could just do one long row of 20 and flip it on its side. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, adding by ones, right? To get some different ways. So these are just some different ways that we can use repeated addition to figure out um, different quantities. And you could use arrays to show that, to show the repeated groups and repeated addition. A challenge question for you about this book that you can think about at home and maybe you can figure out on your own on a piece of paper is if you had 100 ants, did you notice that they didn't change them into rows of to three rows? I wonder why. Do you think that the 100 ants could be arranged into th three equal rows? So that's your challenge question to try to find out. See if you can figure out if that works or does not work when you have 100 ants. All right. We're going to move on to our next activity, which is a game for you. My favorite part of the lesson is the game. And Mrs. Obenshane is going to play with me. It's funner to play with someone, isn't it? So if you were with us yesterday, Mrs. Obenshane and I played a game um, where we made numbers with some cards. And some of those numbers were team numbers, and we talked about how those can be kind of tricky. So the game we're going to play today is called Trios for Teens, so that we can practice putting our team numbers in order. Um, here's how you play the game. I'll talk a little bit about it. Um, and parents or um, bigger helpers at home, this game, the directions and a card deck is online for you if you want to try it out at home. So each player will get five cards of their own. That's their hand. We're going to take the rest of the cards and put them in the middle to make a draw pile. So we keep most of them upside down and we leave one up so that we can see it. And our goal, which you might have guessed by the name, Trios for Teens, is to get three teen numbers in a, in a row in the correct order. And every time we do that, we get to put those aside. We're gonna try to put them on the chart so you can see them. If it will stay up for us, we'll see. Um, and the first person to use all their cards wins. So this is a fun and a quick game. If you play it at home, you might even play um, more than one more than one hand at a time. Okay, so right now, Mrs. Obenshane and I are looking at the cards we have and seeing if we have any trios or um, team numbers that we can put right in order. So I'm gonna start because actually, guess what? I do. So I have this trio. 11, 12, 13, wow. So I'm already down to two cards, but guess what? I have to take one out of the draw pile, okay? So here we go. Hmm, I think I'm gonna take the one I can see, which is a 14, and then I turn another one over. So Mrs. Obenshane has one to choose from. Okay, I don't have any trios. So, first thing to remember with this game is you always draw and then you have to discard a card. So I'm looking at that 11 that's showing there and I don't want that one. So I'm gonna draw one. I got a card that I wanted and then I'm gonna discard one. And I did end up getting a trio. I got 18, 19, 
20. Nice. That's pretty lucky that we both got trios right away. I know. Okay, so I'm looking at my cards and I have to decide which one I'm going to give away. What's my best choice to try to make a trio? So I'm going to put down a 19. I don't want it. And I'm going to pick up another card to see if I can get a trio. Oh my goodness. This is going to be one of those games where guess what? We have to play another hand because... This time I got 13, 14, 15, and I'm out of cards. So that's how fast this game can really be. Mm -hmm. Should we play it again? I think that Miss Karnas shuffled those cards. I don't know. I promise I did. <laughs> okay. She won that pretty quick, don't you think? Mm-hmm. Oh, I promise I shuffled. I promise I shuffled. Okay. And we're playing with big cards, so they don't shuffle very well. I'll mix them like this. I did mix them at home. <laughs> Promise. I believe you. I'm just teasing. <laughs> okay, here we go. One, one, two, two, three, three, four, four, five. Five. So we each have our five cards. Remember, I put the rest in the middle for a draw deck and I turn one over. So we have one we can see and decide if what we want if we want it. Let's take a look. See if anyone has any trios. Hmm. Do I get to go first this time? Yes, you do. Okay. I do have a trio. 16. 17, 18, all right. And so now I draw, and look what I have, you guys. Don't show Miss Carnes. What does she have? What should I do? You're right, I should get rid of this one. So I'll discard that one. Okay, well, I think we're both lucky today because guess what? I have another trio too. 11, is this what I had the last time? 12, 13, so there's my trio, and I have these two, and so it probably doesn't really matter which one I get rid of right now, right? Well, actually, Don't forget you have to draw first. I think it does, because, which one, what should I do? I'm going to take Uh oh, this did I just give her the card she needs? And I'm going to get rid of my 18. Okay. Okay. All right, look at mine. Do you think I should pick up the one that's here on the table? Or should I get a new card? Yeah, I think I could pick up the one that's on the table, right? So I'm gonna draw this one and discard that one. Oh, boy, I saw a card I could use, but now I can't get it. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so... I have these two cards. Oh boy, I'm awful close. Okay, so I'm gonna draw one that I can't see. Oh, all right. And guess what? I'm gonna go ahead, I drew this card. So now I have these. Can you see them? So I'm gonna get rid of the double. I have a double in there, I'm gonna get rid of that. So what do I need? You look at the cards I have. Mm -hmm. Don't say it out loud though, Miss Karnas might hear you. So I'm not gonna pick this one up. I'll pick one of the ones I can't see and maybe we'll get lucky. Mm, this is what I got. Did that help me? I'll discard it. Oh boy, okay. So I still have these guys, these same cards that I had before. So, hmm, I could, pick up this 12, or I could pick up one I'm not sure about. You know, I think I'm gonna, I think I'm gonna take the 12, and I'm gonna get rid of my 15. All right, you guys know what I have, so I don't need that 15, so we'll try over here again. Mm, that's what I got, did it help me? Oh, boys and girls. Now I wish that I kept 
my 15. <laughs> <laughs> but that's part of the fun of playing this game, right? So I have these two cards. I'm gonna go ahead and take one from the pile that I can't see. Okay, so now this is my hand. So which one should I get rid of? You guessed it, the 14. Okay. All right, that 14 doesn't help me, so I'll pick one from over here. Look what I got. Is that helpful? It is 18, 19, 20. Oh, I'm out of yay. Cards this time. So this time, Mrs. Oban Shane won the game. So this is a great game to play because it does give us practice not only um, putting our, those tricky teens in order, because sometimes that can be confusing, but also we get practice reading those teen numbers. And we talked about how they're sort of funny to read. We kind of read them backwards, right? We don't say, we don't, when we look at this 18, we say 18, right? And it feels like we're starting with the eight, which is the second digit. So sometimes we need a little bit of practice reading these. Sometimes we just also need practice saying, teen very clearly so that we don't get those numbers mixed up with other numbers. And this would be easy for you to make cards at home, right? You can just take a piece of paper, fold it in half, fold it in half again, and fold it in half a third time. And that'll give you lots of different, and you need four of each teen number that you yeah. wanna put in the deck. Yes, and if you, if you have a way to print things out at home or somewhere else, this same deck is available for you on our At Home at APS website. So I think it's time to kind of recap our day, our lesson. So let's think about some of the things we talked about today. So we started off with some review of work you did earlier in the week with Mrs. Gaudette. Um, so Mrs. Obenshane reviewed that looking at numbers to make five. If you flip that chart over, you can see what are those combinations that make five? We absolutely Can you remember? Oh, look at that. Five and zero. And then we flip them all around. Zero and five. Four and one makes five. So does one and four. Three and two makes five. So does two and three. And I love the way we wrote these down in our, tr in our combination trees. So we looked at combinations of numbers that can, we can put together to make five. We looked at combinations of numbers that we could put together to make numbers in the range of 10. So we thought about adding on to five, right? So some five pluses, five and three more gives us 10. And we used our frames to work that out. And we'll review that one again. Yes. We did some problem solving with our $20 dot map. Um, and we thought of routes that we could take that would cost us $20 or less. And I wonder if you found a a route like a $14 route, what would you spend your extra money on at the gas station when you stopped? Mrs. Obenshane read also 100 Hungry Ants, and we talked about special ways to put um, numbers together to create arrays, and that's a way to put numbers together in equal rows so that we can easily see how many we have, right? And that's what the ants did in the book so that they could go marching on to their picnic. And your challenge question there was to try to figure out if the 100 ants could get arranged into three rows or not. And the last thing we did was we played our trios for teens game. And that was a fun one. We got to play a couple of rounds and we each won a round. So that's also extra fun. So kiddos, remember, um, we hope you'll tune in tomorrow. And parents or helpers at home, if you're watching, remember to visit our At Home at APS website for family resources. You can watch this lesson again or any others, and you can also access resources so that you can do some of these activities at home. Thank you, mathematicians, for being with us today at At Home with APS. We'll see you again soon.